Okay, welcome to Intimate Talk with Dr. Tolu, your number one love show tonight on Linda. I'm as excited as always, and it's a beautiful thing as always, you know, being a part of this show, um, being a part of your life, giving me the opportunity to be part of your life. It's allowing me to do what I love to do, allowing me to be in the business of making people happy, allowing me to be part of your life to help you, um, solve the puzzle of whatever it is God that is so bothering you emotionally in your relationship, in your marriage and in your sex life. You are welcome to my show. And if this is your first time of tuning into this station, this is Intimate Talk with Dr. Tolu. My name is Dr. Tolu. Uh, you could actually call me the fixer. I'm a clinical relationship and marriage counselor. I'm a sex therapist and I'm a matchmaker. I am in the business of building homes, fixing relationships and mainly sexual issues. So whatever it is that is bothering your mind tonight, you could join me on this show. If it is about relationship, if it's about sex, if it's about marriage, there's no any other place to be. This is the right place. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We care about your life. We care about your well-being. And all we want to do on this show is just, and even on this station, is just to make sure that you are doing well and your life is doing beautifully well. Don't forget you could actually watch me live on Wazobia Max channel 259 and of course you could go into facebook now 99.3 nigeria info on facebook just search for 99.3 nigeria info on facebook you're gonna find me there because it's possible say that she that she got gone i wish me will be say and things can go work for me uh-uh so if I can't accept, I'm not gonna be saying waiting go waiting go do me the second time go pass the first one. Uh uh. So uh, and I won't be that too. for me. What's to be I your buy name? for her. Bro, so it's to be your name. My name na Mike. Mike. Where they call me from? All right, you can find me live on 99.3 Nigeria Info if you are on Facebook. If you don't have access to your television or your radio, you can watch me live on 99.3 Nigeria Info on Facebook. All right, tonight I want to start this show by telling... Um, okay, let me put it this way. Um, we need The more you understand that... In your relationship, in your marriage, in even in everyday relationship with people, the more you understand that people are different, and the more you'll be able to relate better with people. People are different. People are going to act differently. People are going to relate differently. Don't expect everyone to be just like you. Don't expect everyone to act the way you do if you understand this particular point it's going to help you to relate better with people it is okay to be yourself you are unique in your own way so it is okay to be different it is okay to know want it to go out when everybody wants to it is okay to not be able to make friends you know I mean, some people find it very okay, easy, yeah, you know, um, as soon as, I mean, they find themselves in a place, everybody becomes their friend. But there are some that who are always, who are always laid back, who can't make friends easily. It is okay to be just like that. There are people who, um, who are loud, who could laugh, who could make you laugh, who could, you know, relate very easily. But there are some who are just quiet, who are just calm, who doesn't even like to talk. Okay, so whoever you are, it is okay to be just whom you are, because I noticed this trend that because uh, that people um this trend of people, <coughs> excuse me, people trying to feel bad about themselves, having no self esteem because of their personality. Okay. People are different. We are shaped by our <laughs> culture, our upbringing, our Hello, religious cultural yeah. upbringing, and. And sometimes our hormone, you know, our, you know, our, our, our gene, Bros, you know, so there are things that made you whom you give, are, give and it is do. not your fault that you are the way you <laughs> are. So I do. just want to encourage you tonight, <laughs> if you are listening to me, you don't go out so much, you don't have friends, you are not uh, the loud type, or you are too loud, or you make too many friends, and your life is not organized 
whatever, whoever you are, please do not um, look down on yourself. Do not allow your self-esteem to be eroded because of your personality. Instead of that, what you need to do is to work on yourself. I've said that before on this show that look at your traits look at who you are reinforce the, the positive traits and discourage the negative traits everybody is unique there is no personality that is better than the other so wherever you are come and shake up the dust and appreciate the uniqueness in you and if you are a couple you notice that your husband is not acting like you or your wife is not behaving like you please celebrate your differences instead of fighting over it see how you could you know bring the uniqueness in each personality yeah, out and make the best of it uh, instead well, yeah, of fighting we'll all right and i noticed this trend um uh, i mean a few money, weeks ago i've been seeing issues like this you know life. couples and coming for counseling session and you're noticing that there is personality conflict because uh maybe one person is feeling why are you always quiet why are you not talking why are you not making friends and the other party is feeling why are you so loud why are you talking to everybody why are you telling everybody i take phone talk to my wife take phone talk i don't want to talk to people so i noticed this rift this conflict personality conflict and i just want to encourage you couples individuals celebrate yourself the way you are celebrate your differences and it's on that note i'm going to be starting tonight's episode of intimate talk with dr tulu welcome to my show and of course you don't want to be selfish about tonight's show you want to talk to people you care about telling them to tune in to 99.3 nigeria info they could also tune in to 259 um wazobia max on dstv tell people you care about they could watch me live don't be selfish about it talk to people share it share this show share it on facebook uh send uh um, whatsapp um broadcast you know just talk to people you know tell them to tune in because you're going to be doing them a lot of good by doing this okay all right so tonight i'm talking about a very interesting topic i've been trying to you know this is a topic i've been trying to you know i mean wrap my head around i've been trying to do a lot of research talk to people feel people's pulse and you know just understand what is going on on people's in people's head as regard this particular topic so if you are just joining me tonight of course you'll be missing a lot on this show if this is your first time stumbling on this show and of course i really want to see if i could take your comments on this particular topic i really want to in fact i intend to bring the guest so that we could talk about this together, uh, all right? Maybe on Thursday we will be doing that. But tonight, I'll do justice to the topic and I'll conclude it. But if possible on Thursday, I'll still bring someone to talk about it. So I'm going to be talking about circumcision and orgasm. Circumcision and orgasm. So what am I talking about? Uh, it's, it's, it's deep. It's, it, I mean, Nigerians are very secretive. And of course, we pretend a lot. We are hypocritical. That's the truth, all right? I am not say day, I say we. Okay, so I could be part of that. Right. Well, let me see. I, I, it might not be like what you are thinking that I want to talk about. By the time I come back after the short break, I will be explaining what I'm trying to talk about. All right, welcome back. That was yeah. I love that song actually. Like, and I, I'm, I'm a good dancer. If you don't know, I have a lot of gifts really. I'm a good dancer. I'm a good singer. I used to have an album. <laughs> All right. Okay. So tonight it's serious business. I'm talking about circumcision and orgasm. Is there any relationship between these two? What am I actually trying to talk about? All right. Okay. So uh, circumcision is is actually a very sensitive topic, and um, it's sensitive because for a lot of women i mean from experience from what i've seen it's like circumcision has turned their life upside down made them ghost of themselves and reduce their most i mean their self-esteem to zero you know i mean i've seen this over and over again and i just feel the need to just quickly chip in this and take this topic on this show maybe it's going to help a lot of you are in that category and of course if you've been following this show you notice that people have been calling in 
particularly women, when, when you talk about sexual satisfaction, you see women calling in, asking, oh, Dr. Tolu, zip that people who are circumcised, can they enjoy sex? I see this a lot, and it's becoming an issue because I notice that most of the couples that are coming, it's, it's majorly, like I said, I said we will be, I mean, research says about 75% of marital issues are sex related. But I could tell you in Nigeria, I will be modest to even say 98% are sex related. 98% of marital issues in Nigeria are sex related from experience from what I've seen with my clients. And most of the time, so I notice, you know, when I come here to talk to you, um, of course, I do a lot of research, you know, but it is not um, what I just see in Google. I, I, I put up my topics based on research, of course, based on experience with my clients over the years, based on my relationship with other sex therapists. You know, I'm a member of a lot of associations, both internationally and locally. And, you know, I get articles, I get new developments in sex, um, um, what do you call it now? Um, research on sex and sexual issues. So, you know, all this put together, you know, I could tell you that when I talk to you about certain issues, um, I'm not basing, I mean, basing them on fables or, or essays, okay? All right, so I noticed that there's this trend with my clients that most of the time when couples come and and they are talking about sexual issues in their marriage, you notice that most of the time it's the men that are complaining. My wife has lost interest in sex. In fact, men are really going through a lot these days. You, usually before, I used to believe that, you know, it's the women that is suffering, the men that is having all the enjoyment. My darling, it's like the table is turning and men are the ones suffering and, and the women are, I don't know, it's all about, maybe, you know, somebody said maybe the sins of their forefather, you know, all the nonsense, all the, or say nonsense, no, let me not say nonsense, or all the indulgence that our grand, great great grandmothers gave our father maybe the men are now paying for it because i don't understand women are not taking it lightly these days you know maybe out of ignorance maybe out of um exposure maybe out of the fact that i know my rights and you can't tell me what to do women are gradually telling their husband i am not interested in sex a lot of men has to beg and beg and beg and you know when a, a man beg for sex you know what it does to him he reduces his uh, self-esteem to zero you know, because the man feels like, why should I beg my wife for sex? Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not handsome enough. Maybe I don't even know how to do it. In fact, this problem sometimes could actually, this rejection, if it continues, could actually lead to erectile dysfunction. All right? And of course, it affects every aspect of the man's life. The way he relates his productivity. You know, if you see a man that his sex life is doing well, I bet it with you. Or a man that is happy in his relationship or in his marriage, he's going to be on top of his game. All right? But now, do you blame this woman? Do you blame them for saying, no, I don't want sex? Because you notice that most of the time, these women are not enjoying it. They are struggling with it. And I notice this trend, you know, with my clients. And of course, we research and everything that I've told you before and most of the time i notice that women that are complaining i don't like it i don't want to have sex i'm not enjoying it you just come and do and leave me you know when you tell a man just come and do you know it's like what am i why am i doing this you know it's like he's just doing it for himself and the woman will just lie down and the man will jerk and the man it's it's it drives a man crazy it reduces a man to nothing when he's making love to a woman and the woman is just there like a log of wood i mean it's crazy for men, you, you have no idea the psychological impact, all right? But these women, I notice that women in this situation that are saying, I don't want sex, I'm not enjoying it, I don't like it, I'm not interested, I notice a large percentage of them are circumcised. So I begin to wonder, is, this, is it that there's a relationship between sexual enjoyment, ability to reach orgasm, and this circumcision, or you want to call it female genital mutilation? All right, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. So tonight, I am not trying to explain to you what circumcision is all about, what female genital mutilation is all about, that's not a topic. I am trying to deal with the sexual aspect of it where couples are struggling with um, sexual satisfaction, where women are losing interest as a result of female genital mutilation. All right, so I'm going to give you a few facts about circumcision and, and I'm going to start from that. And of course, 
Like I said, this topic is not about majorly about circumcision, but the impact on your sex life and sexual satisfaction. So if I talk about this, I just want to talk briefly about male circumcision because that is not the essence of this topic. But I know that most people will like, oh, I dare female circumcision. I thought it's called female genital mutilation. So if I most time when you try to read about circumcision, most of the things you see are articles about uh, male circumcision. All right, so I'll just say this briefly that male circumcision is the removal of this foreskin from the human penis. You know, most parents, I mean, circumcise their male child, you know, based on cultural, religion, or medical issues. And, of course, some religion totally frown against not performing circumcision on male child. So, also, in some cultures. And even though some experts say that circumcision could reduce sensual, I mean, sexual sensation in men, but studies have shown that there is no significant change in sensation in adults when men undergo circumcision according to dr alex a director of urology at new york urology specialist don't forget that in case you want to google on the, in a case in a study he did in 2016 he confirmed that men who were circumcised experienced the same level of sexual pleasure as men who were not and of course it is believed uh, medically medical doctors believe that male circumcision cut down the risk of sexually transmitted infection and urinary trust infection all right so basically i just have to say a little bit about that about male circumcision but this topic is not about male circumcision when i'm talking about circumcision i have explained to you i'm talking about women and i would i rather even call this female genital mutilation all right um okay so you understand that what i'm talking about i just said that briefly because uh people want to like ask question about male please if you have any question about circumcision and uh, how to do it how did they do it please i think you need to go to your hospital and talk to your medical doctor all right but tonight i am talking about how circumcision affects your sexual um uh sexual ability or sexual satisfaction all right now so for the benefit of this topic, I'll be talking about female genital mutilation. I'm going to give you a few facts according to World Health Organization, okay? Female genital mutilation, also known as female genital cutting and female circumcision, is the ritual cutting or remover. If I let me just explain it to you. Female genital mutilation or female circumcision is the remover of the clitoris, uh, part of the labia, and just the removal of some of the external female genitalia all right very very common in nigeria if you talk about female genital mutilation nigeria is always like number one i don't know i, I wonder why it's so much like that in africa and and of course it's common in the middle east and but and in some parts of asia but nigeria talk google, google uh, female genital mutilation you see most of the articles are talking about nigeria nigeria and and i read some funny comments because most of the time when i uh, um, want to i mean present this kind of topics i want to read people's comments you know mostly people's comments international comments what are they saying about this and what people are saying about nigeria when it comes to female genital mutilation is crazy really it's not nice at all all right so according to World Health Organization, female genital mutilation include procedure, includes procedure that intentionally alter or cause injury to the female genital organs for non-medical reasons. Now people do this, it's, I will call it wickedness, I will call it demonic, I, I mean I'm looking for the right ugly word to call this really. I don't know. It is not medical. It is not useful. It is not doing any good. But even up to date, this thing is still being practiced in Nigeria. Funny enough, I'm not really, I, I don't want to talk about female genital mutilation because I've listened to, even on Nigeria Info, I've listened to, mes I've, I've listened to medical doctors coming to the to this station to talk about, you know, this uh, female genital mutilation and even male, male um, circumcision. I've heard them on radio severally, and of course, like I said, that is not the, ben um, the topic tonight because I'm not delving into what is circumcision and all that, but I'm just going to be giving you a few facts about it. All right, so the procedure female genital mutilation has no benefit 
according to World Health Organization, there is nothing this thing is going to do positively for girls or women. All right, these procedures can cause bleeding and it can cause problems with ur urinating. Okay. In fact, it can lead to complications during childbirth, according to World Health Organization. You know, because you know most of the flesh that is supposed to protect the, the genital areas has been removed, and the, 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 the genital area might be prone to bleeding. All right, and then, and of course, more than two hundred million girls and women alive today have been caught in thirty countries in Africa, the Middle East, and part of Asia more than 200 million so if you are in that situation and you are listening to me tonight call me to the what i'm actually trying to talk about just understand that you are not alone two or so you are one out of 200 million so do not worry your head or kill yourself because of this female genital mutilation is mostly carried out on young girls between fancy and age so you don't even have a say you can't even say don't do this to me i don't want it you can't even complain you are young when they want to do it and even when some teenagers i mean up to age 15 when they want to do it you have no say they won't allow you to say anything but these days i know that even you could fight for yourself if you find yourself in that situation go online go to world Health organization's website there are a lot of help that are waiting for you online if you find yourself in this situation all right Fem female genital mutilation mutilation is a violation of the human rights of girls and women it is wrong. This violation of your right. You can sue for it if you want to. All right. And of course, like I said, there are a lot of medical risk, risk that are associated with this. And of course, there are four major types of female genital mutilation. Maybe I could I should quickly run through that. The first one that is often referred to as clitoridectomy. All right, forget all the English big letter word. Um is is the patchy okay so let me just explain it to you the way you understand there are about four types of fmg female genital mutilation the first one so people ask me dr tolu and uh, some men ask me how do you know if a woman has been circumcised and some women like i don't know i still spoke with someone i mean recently and the person was like I, I i don't know i think i'm circumcised i don't enjoy sex i don't have these feelings i get this a lot of time anyway i get calls like this and and you, this, this particular person and of course you know, when I hear this, I just smile because most people that tells me they like, they would be like, Doctor Tolu, I see my friend's uh, uh, genital area, I see my my sister's own, and I notice that my own is looking different. All right, so they want to know why why is it that I'm circumcised? Is that why I'm not enjoying sex? A lot of marriages are the verge of divorce because of this. A lot of people are broken up. A lot of marriages are broken up because of this all right so it's a serious issue and it's something that we need to educate ourselves about it's something we need to take serious all right so i'm talking about the four major type of fgm female genital mutilation number one is the partial or total removal of the clitoris i i, I mean i think one of these i'm going to be taking a topic on the clitoris maybe i will call it the almighty clitoris now the clitoris is i think is the only female organ in the body of me the only organ in the body or on the only part in the body of a woman that is created solely for sexual satisfaction or sexual enjoyment there is nothing that clitor clitoris is created for than for you to be able to enjoy sex and your clitoris is made up of about eight thousand nerves endings it's so sensitive it's so sensual it's so interesting it's a beautiful part of your life and what these wicked people maybe out of ignorance maybe out of thinking they care about you what they do is they cut off this beautiful organ and deny you the opportunity of enjoying all the benefit that god has put there god is not a wicked god that put that thing there all right so they cut it off so that's the first part of uh, female uh, circumcision or female genital mutilation so they cut off they cut it off completely or cut part of the clitoris now tell me if the only organ in your body that is supposed to make you to enjoy sex is totally removed how do you enjoy it? that's number one part all right and then number two type of female genital mutilation and this one is called excision it is a partial or total removal of the clitoris and the labia minora 
Now, you know, the brother, you know, I, I, I don't know. I wanted to talk to, I wanted to talk to my boss. If it's possible to, you know, come with images. I'm not talking about, you know, but images, you know, like drawings, like cartoon, you know, to show you certain things so that you could understand what I'm talking about. All right. So there is the, there is the uh, inner fold, you know, in a vagina, there is the, the outer fold, which is the labia majora. And then there is the inner fold, which, which is the um, labia minora. So what they do in the second form, you know, the first one of female genital mutilation is about your clitoris. The second one is they remove the clitoris and then they cut off, you know, the labia minora, which is the, the inner fold of the vulva. I mean, even as I'm saying this, I'm having goosebumps, really. You know, they cut off the clitoris, and then they cut off part of the inner. So let me call it, let me all the, forget all the uh, outer minora and the inner minora. Let me call it, you know, like the lips, the lips of the vagina, you know. So they cut off the clitoris, and then they cut off the lip. They could actually, they could actually cut off, you know, that inner lip, they could actually cut it off completely. Completely. Or cut a part of it, you know, that is the second part. And then see cut off the clitoris. That is the second part. That is the second type of female genital mutilation. Now, <laughs> hmm. And then the third part, the third type of female genital mutilation, these people will cut off the clitoris, they will cut off, cut off the inner lip, then they will readjust the, the outer lip and even cover it and sew it together. And then leave a little small space for you to be able to pee or menstruate. It's, it's, it's so, it's so disheartening. I mean, it's so... It's, it's wickedness. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I'm just trying to make excuses that these people are ignorant and they don't know what they are doing. And I'm surprised that personally, even with the current level of education and sensitization, people are still doing these things in Nigeria. Come on, it's wickedness. Because if you know what people that have, have, have these things are going through currently, the way these things are affecting women in their marriages, man, you don't want to thrive it anymore. All right? So... And then the fourth, the fourth type of female genital mutilation is any other one, any other harmful procedure to the female genitalia for non-medical purposes, whether pricking, piercing, incising, scraping, or cutting any part of genital area, any other part, any other type of cutting or, or harmful touching to the female genitalia is a fourth type, type, is a fourth type of female genital mutilation. So I hope you understand. The first one is all about the clitoris. The second one is the inner lip and the clitoris. The third one is the outer lip, the inner lip, and the clitoris. Man, I imagine <laughs> cutting off the inner lip, cutting off the clitoris, and even the outer lip, we are just in sewing it together for crying out loud. For crying out loud. I'm going to be going on a short break, and I'm going to be talking. Big jo I just tried to say all this, you know, to just give a brief explanation. Like Kai said, if you want to know any more about circumcision or whatever, please go to your hospital and talk to your doctor. But by the time I come back after the short break, I will be telling you exactly what I want to talk about tonight. Run through it for like 10 minutes. Why uh, the, the relationship between circumcision and orgasm? You don't want to move a muzzle because I will be right back. All right, welcome back to Intimate Talk with Dr. Tulu. We've been talking about circumcision and orgasm. And of course, um, yeah, I, know I almost lost the vibe. I'm back, all right? We need to, I just need to conclude this topic tonight. It's sensitive and already is giving me goosebumps and I actually don't want to be distracted, really. So, um, all right, like I told you, I took this topic, um, 
circumcision and orgasm, not because I want to teach you what circumcision is all about, because I feel a lot of us know about it, but because I want to um, talk about how circumcision is impacting sexual satisfaction among couples, and as a result of what I've noticed recently with my clients, with people around me, questions emails, text messages, social media questions, and of course, one-on-one -on -one in my office, I noticed that a lot of people are battling with this issue, and of course, we can't just keep keeping quiet about this. Someone has to talk about it, and that is my job, to talk about it. You know, when couples come into my office for counseling, I tell them, I am going to tell you what nobody wants to tell you, because my job is not to, I mean, people are seeing these things, but nobody wants to talk to you about it, because they are feeling like I don't want her to get offended, I don't want her to feel bad, but my job is to make you see these things so you can work on them. So I am going to tell you what most people are not telling you, all right? That is the difference between a professional counselor and talking to your friends and family, you know? And it is not that a, a counselor want to hurt you, it's just that the counselor want to bring into the reality things that are affecting you and you are not seeing, so that you could start working on them. All right, so as a result of, you know, um, people whose life has been affected negatively by this female genital mutilation, that is why I'm picking this topic. So, now, that is the, this is the core of this topic. What is the relationship between female genital mutilation and ability of a woman to enjoy sex? Like I said, I've noticed this. A lot of married women currently are saying, I don't want to have sex. And, you know, it's common among, because I think, you know, the older the generation becomes, the uh, lower the uh, population of people who are being circumcised, all right? Okay, so it's very common among people who have been married, people who are, it's not, I mean, at least the rate, is, I mean, the population is reducing gradually, all right? So, now, there is no two way about it. Female genital mutilation is barbaric. It is wrong. It is, it is condemnable in all its forms. And no one, no one should be made to pass through a lifetime of torture and trauma caused by these negative acts. You know, people, your self-esteem has been reduced. You don't want to understand what this thing is doing to people's life because nobody talks in this part of the world. Everybody is keeping quiet. You know, you, you can't talk about it. All right? In fact, people who are even circumcised or so if they ask their parent, mom, why is my vagina not looking like my sister's own? The mother will say, hey, is it not looking? It's looking now, you know? Nobody want to talk about it. It's like, you know, what I call the conspiracy of silence, all right? So probably now the deed has been done. That was why I said this topic is not core about, I mean, it's not solely about uh, circumcision, but it's for those of you the deed has been done. This barbaric act, this terrible act has been done to you. You have been mutilated and you are listening to me. Probably in your sex life, you are zero. You don't feel nada. And you don't even want to do anything. Your husband is always begging you. are saying, I don't want to just leave me. Or you just come and do. You have talked. I mean, I don't want to go back into that. How that could affect the psyche of your husband. So tonight, what are the facts you need to know? about this thing how can you live your life to the fullest irrespective of the fact that this thing has been done to you life will be lived just once you don't want to regret maybe when you are 60 and 70 and then you started finding out about certain things that you are feeling oh only if i'd known earlier like a lot of people when they meet me they feel like oh dr tolu i wish i've met you like 10 years ago i wish i've seen you like five years ago i wish i've known there is a cancel of 15 years ago that's what i get all right so tonight, I want you to live your life irrespective of this wicked act that, or act that have been committed to you, all right? So what are the things you need to know? Number one, the vagina of a circumcised woman is usually bald. There, it is less fleshy. It has little or no clitoris and sometimes no labia. So now, I'm saying this, if you are listening to me and you are feeling, why well, am I not feeling sex? I don't even know. I've asked my mom, am I circumcised? I don't even know. If you are circumcised, I, I mean, I've talked about the four different types, so you should have known by now. If you are circumcised, your clit, your clitoris might be gone by now, or probably you just have the base. And your inner lip, that is the labia minora, must have, could have been removed, all right? Or 
even the major my uh, uh, minority, I mean major uh, labia could also uh, be removed. All right. So like I said, call it the lips of the vagina, the inner one or the outer one could have gone so if you notice that you are looking at other people's vagina you notice that the clitoris is shooting out the vagina is more fleshy you might be able to conclude that you have been circumcised all right number two you need to know is that women are circum who are circumcised usually have low self-esteem looking at other ladies with protruding and more fleshy vagina okay so it's it's it causes a lot of so this i have to say all this point you know for men, if your wife is circumcised, circumcised, is already having body image issue already, it's already feeling like, why is my vagina not like my friend's own? Why is it not like my sister's own? She's already having a lot of question on her head or in her head that she can't even ask anybody. And then the man is looking, probably you are a man, maybe you are that experienced, and you understand what she's going through and you are looking at her, you are feeling like, oh, hey, now wow, this thing, no even, you know? I mean, when you say stuff like that, you are killing her more because already the service seems is low. And a woman that has problem with her body image will never enjoy sex. Not to even talk of the vagina because every time she wants to make love, she's feeling like, hey, my tummy is big. Hey, I have stretch mark. Hey, my boobs is sagging. That's where all, and a woman needs to put all her mind to be able to enjoy sex. When she's doing that, she can't enjoy it. Not to now talk of the major place, which is the private area, which is the genitalia has been totally scraped off. Forget it, is back, she's already battling with low self esteem. And the best you could do as a man is to encourage her and let an effort to boost her self esteem. All right? Number three, you know, most of the time, the sexual problem that you people are battling with. You know, the sexual, my wife is not liking sex, I'm begging, I'm crying, whatever. The sex is not the problem. The major problem are other things that are surrounding the sex. It's, there are other things, and most of the time, if you solve all these other problems, you will just discover that the sex will fall in place. All right, number three, women who are circumcised often believe that they can never enjoy sex and therefore resign to fate of not making effort. Now, this is it. I see this a whole lot, and this is one of the core points tonight. Women who are circumcised has already concluded in their head, I cannot enjoy sex. It is not possible. There is nothing anybody can do. So they resign to fit. They don't want to make effort. Now, funny enough, for a woman to enjoy sex, she needs to put her mind in it. Even if you are not circumcised, if you don't put your mind, fine. And uh, so a woman that is not circumcised could be more sensual, responsive to touch, responsive to, you know, um, uh, foreplay so easily, unlike a woman that is circumcised. But please, it is a myth that you cannot enjoy sex, all right? So come on, erase that belief from your head. Because what that does to you is, it makes you to stop making effort. Now, for a woman, to be able to enjoy sex, you need to put your mind, your body, your soul. You need to put everything. You are not like a man. I say this a lot of time. A man who is looking at the boobs and the backsides and is having an erection is beyond that for a woman. It's not only very few, very little percentage of women will look at six packs and start getting wet. It's it's more complicated for women. Getting, you know, getting down, love making is more complicated. Now, even if you are not circumcised, if you don't make effort as a woman to put your mind in it, you might not be able to enjoy it. So stop feeling like it's because I'm circumcised, so I've resigned to my feet. Please make effort and you start seeing the changes. Please get that point right. I hope I've been able to say it very well. Then number four, I mean, I've said a lot about the clitoris. Now, like I said, I'm looking at maybe one of these and I'm going to take a topic, you know, maybe I'll call it the almighty clitoris you know take a topic on how beautiful and i know that maybe people whose clitoris has been mutilated might not find that funny actually all right now even though your clitoris must have been removed or partly removed as long as the base is still there there is still possibility of sensitivity this should be a good news for you please stop making your husband to beg you for sex by saying after all that i don't have clitoris i don't have anything no flesh nothing please as long as the base of your clitoris is still there or you still have a little left there is still room 
and possibility for sensitivity. So do not conclude that. Okay, my clitoris has been removed, so I will not be able to enjoy sex. Women, please change your mindset. Fine, we know it's wrong, we know it's bad, but please, you can still enjoy sex. And then number five, partners or circumcised women need to be patient with them. Take your time, make extra efforts, and master your skills for, the, for them to be able to enjoy sex. Now, men, all of you men that have been calling your doctor to Lou, I'm always begging, she's not interested, just come and do it. She will lie down like a log of wood. The truth of the matter is you need to be patient. In fact, in developed world, you know, in the abroad, say like America or UK, where this kind of genital mutilation is, I don't even think is, 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 is close to non-existence, you know, among women. You still need to take your time to make women to enjoy sex. Not to now talk of Nigeria, where, you know, female genital mutilation is, is Nigeria is like on the top of the list. Most women you see around are actually circumcised. And then, if you want to make love to th those kind of women, the only way you can stop begging her for sex is to make her enjoy it. And this will take time, slow and steady. You can't rush her. A woman that is set, that is circumcised will not be able to enjoy sex. You know, the fast, fast, fast sex. No. It has to be because you have to do, you have to master. Like I said, just take note of the, this fact that you need to be patient. You need to be patient with her. You need to take your time. You need to make extra effort. The effort that you will not make on someone who is not circumcised, you need to make it. And of course, master your skills. Know where to touch, know how to touch, know how to get involved in foreplay. You know, there is something somebody posted today. I, I, I wish I could, I could find it. You know, that about, about only about 30% of Nigerian men give oral sex. And about 20 just, I think if I can remember, about 20% just put their head there. They are just, they're putting their head there. Only 5%. I mean, I don't, I can't remember. Maybe only 5% really put their tongue or something. And only about 1% really know how to give it. Sincerely speaking, men, most of you don't know how to give aura. You don't know how to get involved in foreplay. And women that are circumcised, forget it. Without this kind of a thing, she, she can't, nothing is going to happen. Nothing. She, you need to put her in the mood. You need to be slow and steady so you could stop fighting about sex. Going outside, cheating on her, we must solve the problem. Because you still come back and meet the problem you left unsolved. All right? Then number six, when it comes to the art of lovemaking and achieving orgasm, there's need to put effort as a woman. I think I've said that earlier. Now, it is no magic. When people come to me for sex therapy, I tell them there's nothing like abracadabra, we'll pray, we'll fast, and then this thing will happen. I am not Jesus Christ, neither am I your pastor. There is no magic. It is hard work. You need to put effort. You need to put effort. You need to do your exercise. You need to make up your mind to make this work. It won't work if you don't do soft something, if you don't put your effort. All right? So the point is, when it comes to the art of lovemaking and achieving orgasm, women, you can't just expect the man to do everything and think, oh, yeah, do it now. I'm not enjoying it because I don't like it. You need to put your mind, your body, your soul, get involved. Look forward to it. Reset your brain that I want to enjoy this thing. Because the more we keep working and keep trying to satisfy you, nothing is going to happen if you don't put your mind. And then number seven, my time, actually. Even though some men believe that uncircumcised women are sweeter in bed, because they are more fleshy, I actually did, uh, I, I put, um, <laughs> I put, um, a kind of debate on social media you know to ask about this and i noticed that nigerians are shying away from me normally i put a post on my facebook you see like 30 40 50 60 comments this one nobody want to talk about it and i wasn't surprised i was actually expecting that because i know in this part of the world that's that's who we are we shy away a lot we pretend a lot nobody want to talk about this is what some people inbox me some people were, at least i really want to say thank you to those we were strong enough to make some comment and of course some people inbox me now from all indications some people some men believed that women who are not circumcised are sweeter in bed because they have more flesh according to them 
But research shows that circumcision doesn't necessarily determine how sweet a woman will be in bed. Love making, like somebody said on my Facebook page, love making is very sweet. It's interesting, it's delicious, it's exciting, it's beautiful, it's heavenly. So now, when you don't, when you don't make love to someone you love, somebody you care about, now, the genital plays little or no role when it comes to that. Now, fine, you might be thinking, oh, it's, uh, an uncircumcised woman is, more, woman is more fleshy, but there is nothing to say that a man will find a woman who is uncircumcised sweeter in bed, you know, in quotes, than one who is circumcised. There is nothing to show that. If a woman, if a man care about you and you understand your skills, you know how to make love, you really know how to get down. I don't think, and the fact is, whether you are circumcised or not, doesn't indicate whether you'll be sweeter. Whether when a man make love to you, I feel like, oh, I love what I feel, oh, that baby sweet, and I don't want to, I want to, I mean, I, I know. And this is something I see, one, I mean, I posted this some, sometimes. Maybe men on this show, maybe I could even put it up, one of these days, so that you can tell me if women are actually sweeter than the other, and what are the, your criteria? In fact, I think that's what I will talk about tonight before I will close the show. Then next week, I'll take your comment on this topic, all right? I, I, I mean, on Thursday, all right? Okay, then finally, so the point is whether you are circumcised or not, it doesn't mean that a man is going to find you more sweeter or not. So forget, stop looking down on yourself. You are sweet just the way you are as a woman. So package yourself, understand your skills, master your skills. You are good. And for us, and, and and for real, if a man loves you or a man loves you, forget it. Every other thing become the icing on the cake, really. And then finally, it takes longer period for a circumcised woman to get sexually aroused or satisfied. But she can be satisfied. That's the good news. Even though it takes longer period than someone who is not circumcised. But the good news is that even though you are circumcised, you can still enjoy sex. Stop denying your husband. Stop resigning to face. Stop feeling like you are condemned. It is bad. It is barbaric. But the deed has been done. You still need to live your life. You need to enjoy your life to the fullest. And that is the essence, the whole essence of this topic tonight. All right? Thank you guys for joining me. And of course, for like five minutes, I want to listen to your opinion on this particular topic. And of course, I think on Thursday, is my is Thursday my uh, open mic? No. On Thursday, I want to listen to your opinion on this particular topic, actually. But tonight, I will be opening my phone line and i will be reading your comments on facebook your comments on instagram on this particular topic what do you think feel free to talk to me because on intimate talk with dr tolu nobody is going to judge you you're free to be yourself all right She can help you rekindle the flames of love the flames of love dr tolu the fixer she can help you rekindle the flames of love. The flames of love. Doctor Tony, the fixer. Call us on 01277-0993-01277-1993-01277-2993 and 01277-3993. This is Nigeria Info. We are listening. Hello? 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 Hello, good evening, ma. Good evening. Oh, good morning. Good morning, actually. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I'm listening to your topic. Yeah. The explanation and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny when people said the constant women don't enjoy sex. Mm. It's a lie. Mm. Enjoying sex has a lot to do with the interest. Mm. I realize that as a woman, at times, because of the circumstances or the situation that one is facing, mm. you can easily fall out of love with your husband mm. or whoever you're dating. Mm. And at that point in time, 
um, love making will not really be pleasing to you. Mm. But when you are in love and you're crazy about your husband, you won't even wait for him to ask for it. Mm. You feel that you will start cuddling him and you will know, want to make that first move. Mm. It is something of the mind. It has nothing to do with circumcision. Mm. I am circumcised, mm. but I enjoy sex a lot. I think that will, encourage, that, will, that will encourage a lot of women because a lot of women are, are going through a whole lot because of this, you know, condemning themselves because they are circumcised. Like you well, have it said, has nothing to do with circumcision. Even it. when a woman is experiencing orgasm, it has everything to do with the G-spot inside the vagina. Mm. Mm. It has nothing to do with circumcision. Mm. I enjoy sex a lot. Mm. But when I am out of a relationship, I maybe have a problem with uh, the person I am dating and we break up and I I start finding fault and I hate the person, sex will not appeal to me anymore. Mm. And I feel it's natural. Yeah. It should yeah. be very hard. Yeah. For me to want to have anything to do with any man. Yeah. So it's something of the mind interest. Yeah. It's not circumcision, please. Thank you, darling. Thank you so, so, so much for calling. And that's, that's a confirmation that, I mean, you need to put your mind. You need to get involved. You need to get involved. And it is very easy, especially for the married couples, it's very easy to fall out of love. It's very, not fall out of love like that. It's very easy to lose interest, you know, to get carried away with activities and, uh, and pressures of, you know, of life and family and children and, and, you know, and forget the romance part of your marriage. It's very, very easy. So you need to make deliberate conscious effort, deliberate conscious effort of putting your mind in it. If you don't do that, you will keep complaining, whether you are circumcised or not. All right? Thank you, Peter Clement. Nice job, ma, my honorable. And <laughs> thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Of course, you could drop your questions, your comments about this particular topic. I'm live on Instagram on Intimate Talk with Tulu. I'm going to read your comment, and I'm still picking your calls. Hello? I lost that. Hello? Yes, uh, doctor. Good morning, sir. Good morning. This is Mr. Ido from Lekki. You're welcome, sir. I uh, always uh, struggle to call you each time on your program, but uh, I think this is the second time ever. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're welcome. Good to have you. Uh, I think I have a lot to talk about this because it's happened to me. But however, I was just want to just say uh, in just one thing alone and so I was at crack up because I see the lines are busy. See, yeah. this topic you... Uh, if your course, if your um, program, there is something I have taken time to follow you on. Mm. Even though it sounds as if it's something that uh, nobody should talk about or mention, but mm. I think in the course of uh, learning this, you've been able to say that, oh, God is this. So oftentimes I see you saying, giving kind of... Um, as part of your program, you know, praises or glory or attributes or attributing, you know, a greater achievement of all that you are researched on to God, which is very, very good. Mm. That being said, this uh, circumcision thing is also, the Bible talks about it mm. somewhere in Corinthians. I don't know if I can go a little bit of the go. Okay. See, even though the Bible did not give details on it, one fact cannot be taken away. The, the Bible there tells us that God is no longer interested in who is circumcised and who is not circumcised in mm. the flesh. Mm. It's somewhere in the Corinthians. Mm. That what matters to him now and what he's looking at now, just as circumcision in the flesh the segregated or the separated Israelites from other nations and God's people, that circumcision this time should be circumcision of the heart. Yeah. So that agrees totally to what you narrated this uh, this uh, this morning or this uh, evening slash this morning. So that just what I want to chip in so that you see um, that you are right after all. You are correct, very, very correct. I listen to you. 
Thank you so 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 Thank much. Thank you both this uh, work. And uh, also, uh, WhatsApp to you last time that I'm going to be on your WhatsApp page for this uh, class. Oh. So, but okay. I don't know whether you play, you, have, you make it a section by section, and you also you close the section also. I don't know because I'm um, I think I'm I've been busy. I think I'm planning one for next week. So. Oh, oh you last only one week. The the which one? The WhatsApp class. Yes. It's just for one hour. One. It's every Sunday evening mostly, but uh, sometimes I get so busy. It's just for one hour. It is a class okay. uh, for one hour, and of course people can ask private questions and. and but you have to be patient with me because of over investment. I should uh, blame myself <laughs> for that. Or in whatever branch of uh, you know education or. Uh, 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 Whatever you want to teach the public that you want to make it a class yeah. or a course, please, I'll be interested. All right, all right. Uh, please take note of that. All right, thank you so much for calling. I'm sorry, I mean, I, mean, I don't have the time, you see? And what I will do is, this is a very sensitive topic, and um, what I'm going to do is, um, on Thursday, on Thursday, I'm going to open the phone line. It's, it's not my open mic Friday. And I wouldn't even want to talk about your question or anything. I just want to talk about this particular topic so that we could trash it. Thank you guys for joining me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Wazobia Max, and on, of course, on 99.3 Nigeria in full. I'm so, so happy to have you guys with me tonight. And, of course, it's a sensitive topic, an interesting one, one that somebody needs to talk about. Thank you to all of you guys that have joined me on Instagram. I love you. You could follow me on Intimate Talk with Tolu. Intimate Talk with Tolu on Facebook, on Instagram. And if you have any question you want to ask me, you can reach me on IntimateSolutionNetwork.com. That's my website, IntimateSolutionNetwork.com. And if you want to call me, call me on 081-845-75377. 081-845-75377. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. Before I go, here is my food for thought for tonight. guys for joining me on Instagram, Olawale, Okesim, Joe Adams, Joseph, um, there's this my guy, there's this guy, I'm trying to look for you, I'm phenomenal, yeah, always following me, always making comments, always making me, yeah, I appreciate you, thank you guys for joining me, thank you all, and here is my food for thought for tonight. Every woman wants a man who will fall in love with her soul as well as her body. Every woman wants a man who will fall in love with her soul as well as her body. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.